Dover Air Force Base does serve as the primary location for our combat fallen when they're returned to the United States. It's not the only location, but it is the primary location where our combat fallen do come back to the United States. Well, I'm the commander of the Dover Port Mortuary. Uh, there are actually seven other mortuaries in the Department of Defense, but Dover has the only continental United States mortuary. Our primary mission is to uh, welcome home the fallen, our combat fallen, and to respond to mass fatalities as directed by the National Command Authority. Uh, when we are notified that there's a, a combat fatality downrange, uh, that kind of gets the gears in motion here at Dover Air Force Base, and typically within 36 to 48 hours, uh, our, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, their, their remains are brought back to Dover Air Force Base. As you can imagine, within that small time period, a lot of notifications have to be done by the services uh, to the family members, and we have to get the family members here to Dover Air Force Base uh, to witness the dignified transfer of their loved one back to American soil. So there's a lot that go on uh, in that 48-hour window as we, we prepare for the arrival of that combat soldier, sailor, airman, or marine. A dignified transfer, it's, it's not a ceremony, it's a, a solemn movement where we pay the respects, we provide dignity, honor, respect to those, our nation's fallen. They come off an aircraft uh, in a flag draped transfer case and the families are here to witness the return of their loved one to American soil. The process involves uh, a general officer from that uh, soldier, sailor, airman or marine service along with an honor guard team that would uh, take that transfer case off the aircraft and place it into a vehicle that then takes the uh, fallen to our mortuary. The process is almost exactly the same by service. There's some small nuances uh, depending on the honor guard for each service, but the process is generally the same. For the families, this is really where reality hits home. So if you can imagine, 24 to 48 hours ago, the family received a knock on the door and they got the worst news of their life. Uh, they come to Dover Air Force Base to then witness the return of their loved one. Uh, it can be very emotional. Uh, it's very heart-wrenching, but it's very humbling. The mortuary itself has been at Dover since the 1950s. Uh, since that time, we've had about 30,000 American soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines have returned to Dover Air Force Base from various conflicts around the world. There's always been a dignified transfer of some sort whether you call it a dignified transfer, an honorable carry, a ramp ceremony, that has always occurred. Um, it became more open to the public in 2009 uh, when we allowed media and the families to travel to Dover at government expense to witness the return of their loved ones. Prior to that, families were allowed to come to Dover, but it was at their own expense. And typically about 15% of the time, families would arrive at Dover Air Force Base. Uh, with the change in media policy and allowing families to travel to Dover at government expense, we're at over 83% of families come uh, to Dover Air Force Base to witness a dignified transfer. So as you can imagine, there's a large uh, logistical tail that goes into getting families to Dover Air Force Base, bedding them down here, taking care of them, getting to them to the flight line, and then getting them home safely. The costs associated with bringing families to Dover Air Force Base, they do vary. It varies upon where the family members are coming from. Uh, the government will provide travel and associated expenses for the primary next of kin plus two, though that can be expanded at the Secretary of the Services level. After we return uh, our nation's fallen off the aircraft, uh, we turn the remains over to the Armed Forces Medical Examiner where the fallen are scientifically identified. Once we receive the remains from the Armed Forces Medical Examiner, we'll, we will take those remains through a process where we will uh, embalm them, uh, get them uh, cosmetized, dressed, and then shipped home to the family as soon as we can. Our primary mission here is at Dover. However, we have been asked by the, the government to uh, take part in dignified transfers of uh, other individuals who may have lost their lives in service to their country. A well-known example would be Ambassador Stevens, who was killed in Libya on 9-11 in 2012. Along with that, at the discretion and the direction of the National Command Authority, we have the ability to respond to what we consider a mass fatality. Uh, you know, two examples would be the Space Shuttle Columbia and the Space Shuttle Challenger over the previous two decades, where uh, something tragic happened and uh, the Air Force became involved in the search and recovery efforts to uh, find the remains of the crew and then to bring the, those remains here to Dover Air Force Base for scientific identification so they could be returned to the families. Well, I've been in the Air Force for 20 years. 
This is my third time as a commander. Uh, this is by far the most humbling job I've ever had in my 20 year career because we're paying respects to the top 1% of our military. Less than 1% of our nation put on the uniform. So 300 million people, less than 1% say, here I am, take me. I will go and serve our nation. And of that, a very, very small subset, less than a tenth of a percent, give their lives in combat. We owe it to them to provide them dignity, honor, and respect.